Welcome to The Real Deal with Jason Silverman, the podcast dedicated to helping you build the business of your dreams and live the life you always hoped for, with valuable and fun tips and info to make your life easier and more fun. And now, here's your host, a man who sprinkles metal shavings on his breakfast cereal just for fun, Jason Silverman. And welcome to The Real Deal with Jason Silverman. I'm your host, Jason Silverman, and I'm thrilled to share some time with you once again today. As you know, I am always on the hunt for interesting as well as super smart Real Deal guests. And I got to tell you, today's show is an absolute winner. I want to introduce my listeners to somebody who's truly been there and done that. And I'm excited to pick his brain for your benefit today. And if we're going to be 100% honest, I'm going to pick his brain for my benefit as well. So for the folks who I work with in any of my coaching programs, my mastermind group, or through Powerful Words Character Development, All-Star Cheer Sites, or the Jason's Army Mastermind Group, you know how much I focus on the importance of improving your productivity and efficiency, right? Well, this show is going to help us to do just that. So today it's going to be my honor and privilege to share an amazing resource with you. You're going to love today's guest. He's got a ton of valuable info about what I consider to be Not just an important topic, but a relevant right now topic. It's also got a great fun way of showing it. So I want you to strap yourself in. Today's show is going to be an absolute blast. As I'm sure you already know, I'm committed to helping business owners just like you to become more successful, enjoy your career more, and in general, make your life significantly more fun. You know, we only get one ride on this merry-go-round, and uh, we want to make sure it is one hell of a ride. Alrighty, boys and girls, it is now that time, so uh, stop surfing Facebook, put away your phone, your tablet, your dog, your cat, your spouse, your significant other, whatever, whoever might possibly distract you from today's show. You're about to get some great and immediately implementable information, and I don't want you to miss even a second of it. So, before we can officially get going, let me give you a little bit of background about our guest today. Craig Ballantyne is a productivity and success transformation coach from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, and the author of The Perfect Day Formula, How to Own the Day and Control Your Life. He's been a contributor to Men's Health Magazine since 2000, and his articles have also appeared in Women's Health, Oxygen, GQ, Maxim, National Geographic, Men's Fitness, and Muscle and Fitness Hers, amongst many others. His articles have also been featured on Inc.com, Lifehacker.com, and Telegraph.co.uk. Craig's online success has led him to create books and a coaching program to show other gurus how to take their ideas and help thousands of people. Folks, Craig is most certainly the real deal. Craig, thank you. I'm thrilled to have you today. Hey, thanks so much, Jason. Really excited to be here and talk to your listeners. Ah, fabulous. We're excited too. So listen, before we officially get started, you know, for those who haven't had the opportunity and pleasure of either meeting you or hearing you speak, and I've had the distinct pleasure of both of those, uh, as well as reading your books, um, do me a favor. Tell, what's your story? What are you passionate about? What makes you tick? Who is Craig Ballantyne? Oh, wow. Well, we got all day, right? Um, <laughs> so Craig Valentine, uh, that would be me speaking in third person. He had some anxiety issues in 2006. So I was, a, you know, I've been building this online business for years. I sold turbulence training to almost, you know, a million people in the last 15 years. Um, and my business really took off in 2006. I had anxiety issues then that sent me to the hospital twice. I thought I was having a heart attack at age 30. It was ridiculous. I had to go and turn over all these rocks to overcome the anxiety. Then I realized, hey, I've got an amazing system here that can really help people transform their lives. And so I put that into the book, The Perfect Day Formula, which I get so excited about, which is helping busy entrepreneurs, executives, parents, it doesn't matter who they are. It helps busy people get more done, make more money, and still get home on time for dinner so they can be present with their family at night. And that is what I get so so excited about these days. I'm really excited to talk to you about this because I know I, uh, I grabbed a copy of your book when it first came out. And, you know, I've been studying this stuff for years. This is the first time I've ever seen a true system. And I'm a systems geek at heart. So when somebody actually can provide me with a workable, proven system to actually do the things that I need done, um, I get really, really excited. And this is the first time anybody actually provided that to me in regard to upping my own productivity, taking all the courses. I did the, the Ben Franklin, so I, you name it. Um, but again, this, this 
kicked it to a whole nother level. So I'm really excited to get even more info about it, not just for, uh, for all my listeners who should be hungry and writing furiously at this point, but also for myself. So tell me this, I want to dig right in. You know, tell me about how, how can somebody improve their life using the perfect day formula? Well, you know, I was just writing about this today, Jason, and there's this big thing going on in the uh, personal development world about the 5 a.m. club. I don't know if you've read any of these books or heard about this, but in, people are wearing what time they get up as a badge of honor, and they're really mistaking the whole point of being more productive because most people don't need to get up at 5 a.m., and most people aren't really... Uh, you know, their life is not set up to be a, to get up at 5 a.m. And so this whole thing about being more productive in the morning has just gone to the extreme. And that's what not what my book is about. I believe that you can be more productive by controlling your mornings. And all you have to do is get up 15 minutes earlier. So not two or three hours earlier than what you're doing now, but just 15 minutes. And when you get up 15 minutes early and you go down to your kitchen table and you sit there and you think about your number one problem in life or your number one opportunity in life and how to either solve that problem or take advantage of that opportunity, you are going to come out ahead because most people are not proactive like that. They don't plan and prepare and they don't have any time to think. But if you get up 15 minutes early and spend that time thinking about those big opportunities to take advantage of and you plan and prepare the solutions for success, that is how you're going to get ahead. And then you control that morning with how you uh, do the rest of your routine, and that way you can get more done. It's just adding a little bit more structure into your life so that you become more successful and have more freedom to do what really matters to you. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, I, I got to tell you, in, in, in full disclosure, when I read that in your book, 15 minutes, I'm like, Ugh, really? <laughs> Come on. I mean, all right, this is the hook, whatever. And then we're going to get in. I'm going to have to get up at two o'clock in the morning, or maybe I should just <laughs> never go to sleep and I could be way, way more productive. I'll die, but I'll be way, way more productive. Right. So do you, do you find, and obviously with, with that 15 minutes, uh, obviously you gave the key right there and what you're actually doing with the 15 minutes. What are, what are, what are some of the mistakes that you've seen actually folks doing? I get the whole 5 a.m. club or 4 a.m. club, and, and that's great, but what do you see people doing at that hour that doesn't help them win the day? Well, you know, it's the same thing that most people do at every hour that doesn't allow them to win the day, which is social media, which is email. It's stuff that you get sucked into right away. But all we need to do is make one victory, one little bit of progress on our big priorities, and that will give us the the um, you know momentum to keep us going every day, and we just need to have focus time. So I tell people to start with 15 minutes. I'd love if they had 30 minutes. I'd love if they put 60 minutes into their number one priority, which is what I do first thing in the morning. I write for 60 minutes because I'm an author. Uh, you know, I'm creating these articles and books and products to sell to people. So that's my most important work time. And so the best thing you can do is first of all identify that number one priority and do it. Now most people also struggle with, and I get this a lot when I. Start step off stage at events when I'm speaking, they struggle with not knowing what their number one priority is. And so, you know, there's, uh, you know, you can take a, the idea of the four hour work week, which made people a lot more productive, but it made them very productive at the wrong things. And so you can be the most productive person in the world at making spreadsheets, but if making spreadsheets doesn't actually well have, you know, just stayed in bed. And so a lot of people they're either wasting their time on social media or email or they're working on the wrong things. And that's actually the heartbreaking part is when you find out that somebody's doing all of this great work at really early in the morning on the wrong things. And Jason, that's what you help people do is get dialed in on things that really matter and move the needle in their business and their life. And so that's what people need is just getting a little bit of expert advice from somebody to know what matters. I love that. Well, speaking of what matters, let's talk about this for a second. You know, I thought that the whole concept of the 3C formula I thought was brilliant. Would you mind sharing it and then, you know, talk about it a little bit. How does it work? Yeah, so the 3C formula comes from Stoic philosophy. Well, Stoic philosophy is an ancient philosophy that is really about um, living virtuously and, you know, not worrying about what other people think. And so there's a really great quote in this book by Epictetus, who's a philosopher, and that went like this. 
control what you can, cope with what you can't, and concentrate on what counts. And I made this my mantra, and it really helped reduce the amount of stress in my life, and I was very, very happy. And then I realized, hey, wait a minute. This 3C formula really applies to the three parts of the day. Control your morning. Cope with what you can't control in the afternoon, and actually you can conquer the chaos of the afternoon with my formula. And then, most importantly, and I want people to really understand why I'm emphasizing this, most importantly, you concentrate on what counts at night. So people that read the book, some of them look at the book and say, oh, there's so much structure and these rules and all this, that, and the other thing. But they don't see that all of this is done for their best interest of allowing them to get work done on time and not wasting the day so they can get home and take their kids to practice, so they can take their kids to recitals, so that they can have dinner with the family at the kitchen table, and so that they can then spend quality time with their children and their spouse after dinner and not have to be checking the iPhone for emails and all that sort of stuff. So that's how we apply the 3C formula to the day. I love this. You know, one of the things you just mentioned was people getting worried about all the rules and structure. And interestingly enough, I actually found that the most comforting thing, um, really, because you were talking about creating your own rules. So how does somebody create rules for their own life? You know, and, and I guess for somebody who hasn't really delved into this yet, you know, why would anybody want to do that? Yeah, it's a great question. And so I like to use this analogy, Jason, of stop signs and stop lights. Now imagine there were no red lights. Imagine there were no traffic rules and you just had to like somehow get your way from point A to point B and everybody's just whipping through every intersection. That would not work. We would get hurt. We'd get killed. There would be no freedom in our life. And so that's what we need for ourselves. We need our own personal operating system. We need our own boundaries. And I call them personal rules. There's some people call them personal commandments. But what they are is something that in most people's minds already exist. Like we all have ways that we operate. You know, if somebody is a paleo diet eater, that means that they have rules for how they eat, you know, their nutrition rules. If someone goes to church every Sunday, they have a rule for their religion and for their rituals that way. And so most people just haven't taken the time to write down what are the, you know, the five or 10 most important rules that I live my life by. And so for people that think this might be a good idea, but struggle to where, figure out where to start, this is what I would, I would recommend people do. You kind of use these templates. We'll make it Number one, make a rule for your health. This could be how you eat. This could be how often you exercise. This could be if you meditate. This could be if you do yoga. This could be, um, you know, even if you take a walk after dinner. You know, if you take a walk after dinner every day, that's your grounding thing for your health. And as long as you do that, everything else is going to be fine. So you just write that down. And then the next one is, well, what's the number one rule for your building your wealth? How do you move ahead financially every day? Well, is it, you know, I'm going to do five sales calls every day. I'm going to send out an email promoting my, uh, you know, cheer camp every day. I'm, am I going to, uh, you know, send out a direct mail piece every week? And therefore, I have to do this, this, and this every day. So what's your number one financial rule? And then you make sure that that's written down and you share that with people and Getting accountability for these rules keeps you on track for these right behaviors. Another rule that most people should have is the number one thing they should not do. And this goes, you know, because most people actually, they do a lot of the right things, but it's those temptations and bad decisions that actually ruin everything. So one bad decision can wipe out 10 good decisions. So look at your life and say, what am I really messing up on and how can I make a rule about that? So for example... Let's say that you started off with one glass of wine with dinner, and now three or four months later, you're up to three glasses of wine. Maybe you're even drinking a bottle of wine at night, and you're like, okay, I'm waking up groggy the next day. I'm not getting going until about 11 o'clock. I really need to change my life here. And so you just say, well, I'm not going to drink Sunday night through Thursday night because I want to wake up Monday through Friday really refreshed and ready to go. And so I'm going to have drinks on the weekend, but no alcohol from these for these five days. And that's a rule that's going to keep you out of trouble, deliver you from temptation, and keep you successful. So those are just three rule templates that someone can use to be more successful. And they make, they make so much sense. These are not um, unrealistic rules either. No, absolutely not. I mean, but they're really, like I said, they're... 
I like to use the phrase computer, like operating system. Like a computer has an operating system. This is how it becomes really efficient, really effective, and it just you know keeps you out of trouble. It keeps you on track. Everything works when the operating system is in place. And we again, we all have these things in our mind, just like we all have our goals in our mind. But Zig Ziglar. The great motivational speaker taught us to write down our goals and keep them with us and in front of us all the time so that we're reminded of what we want to achieve. And with your rules, some of them might be aspirational in a way so that you keep them in front of you and remind you on how to live your life. And then that way you like when you're in that temptation zone where it's like, you know, hey, let's go out for happy hour on Tuesday. But you're, you're saying, no, I don't want to drink during the week. You say, no, I've got this rule. Uh, I just don't drink during the week. Thank you for the invite. Um, or you might go and have a you know a diet soda or something. And so it's just keeping you on track. And also when you share that, you don't want to be seen as a hypocrite. So if you tell people I don't drink Monday through Thursday, and the next thing you know you're drinking on Tuesday night, people say, "Hey, wait a minute. This uh, I thought you didn't drink during the week." And you'll feel a little bit of shame, and you'll be like, "Okay, I got to get back on track." And so it's just a reminder. It's a boundary. It keeps us fenced in from you know really letting ourselves mess up i love this absolutely love it all right let's uh let's talk about transformation for a second because i mean i, I i'm at the root of everything what we're talking about it's really about that end result that that personal transformation from where they were to where they want to be so what are the five pillars of personal transformation and if you'd be so kind you know would you walk us through a couple of examples so that um everybody listening today really can sink their teeth into it. Yeah, so the five pillars of transformation came from my weight loss contest. So I've run over 25 before and after weight loss contests, you know, the the before photo, the after photo, the little essay that goes with it. And I've read hundreds of those essays and I realized that the winners always had these five things in place. And when these five things were in place, they were always successful. But if any one of these five pillars was missing, then these people actually struggled or they dropped out. And so what I discovered was they are better planning and preparation. That means you have to have a really good plan for whatever it is you want to change. So if you want to you know, stop drinking during the week, that means you have to have a plan of, okay, if I'm tempted by drinking, what should I go and do instead? So you have to have solutions for every obstacle. And then the next one is professional accountability. And that's having a coach because a coach or a mentor is going to give you two things that no one else is going to give you. First of all, they're going to give you expert advice. And second of all, they're going to give you no excuses accountability. So your friends will probably let you get away with whatever you want. And they'll just kind of say, ah, oh, don't worry about it. You'll do it. You'll get back on track tomorrow. But a coach is going to say, okay, you messed up. How can we avoid this in the future? What was the problem before? How can we eliminate the temptations? And they're really going to hold you accountable. The third pillar is positive social support. That's your cheerleaders in life, your friends who are always going to be there for you when you struggle. And so they're really important to have those people in place just so that when we have bad days and tough times, we have someone who can help us up, you know, pick us up off the ground and say, you know what? Tomorrow you're going to come back stronger. You can do it. And so we need those people. Just like on the side of the Boston Marathon, you need those people at mile 20 when you're going through the wall, as they say in marathon running, you need those people to help you out. Okay, so next is the fourth pillar, which is a meaningful incentive. And when I first came up with these five pillars, I just said an incentive. So I thought it was like a monetary incentive would be good enough, or you know, buying a new pair of jeans because you lost five pounds is good enough. But that's not the case. That's not the, uh, enough of an incentive to keep you going through those tough times and dark days in the middle of the transformation when you kind of get bored with whatever it is you're trying to change. And so what we've done is added the word meaningful to it because when you dig deep and find something meaningful in your life to change, then you really will stick to it. So in my weight loss world, I found that whenever a guy would say, I want to lose weight so I have more energy for my children and so I can be around for when they graduate college, those were the guys who won the contest and who stuck it out. And so that's really important to have that meaningful incentive. And then finally, fifth is the big deadline. And this one is so important at the start, middle, and finish because the deadline 
spurs us to initial action to overcome inertia. So whenever we're doing something, maybe getting into a transformation or maybe we're going through a 90-day phase in our business where we really have to buckle down and we're going to say, okay, I can do anything for 90 days because at the end of this 90 days, the deadline's going to be over and I can kind of relax a bit. And whether it's 90 days or 60 days or 21 days, we can all say to ourselves, I can do anything for this time period. So that gets us going. But then about halfway through, again, we go back to it's like, oh, man, I'm kind of slogging through this. This is not as easy as I thought it was going to be. It's kind of boring. But we get halfway through and we think, okay, now I'm on the home stretch. I see the light at the end of the tunnel and away I go. And then as you get closer and closer and closer to the deadline, it's just like when that Boston Marathon, you might have hit the wall at mile 20. But the next thing you know, at mile 25, you're running like it's mile two again because that fin finish line is in sight. And so you push and you push and you push and you push to the end. And that's where a lot of your best results come from. So Jason, those are the five pillars of success that can change anything in anyone's life. Not only weight loss, but I, these are the five pillars that I used unknowingly because I didn't actually come up with them until a couple years later. But these are the five pillars that helped me overcome that crippling anxiety in 2006. And so when you have those in place, you can change anything. Let me uh, let me get a little bit personal then. Um, as far as your anxiety, how did you specifically use these to overcome that anxiety? Yeah, great question. And so, you know, I got 2006. I'm 30 years old. I'm living in Toronto, big city life. You know, going out at night, chasing girls, staying up late, but also as a personal trainer, getting up really early in the morning, and then also running an online business. I mean, it was a it was a pivotal year for me, both health wise and financially, because that was a year that my online business took off. And it gave me all this freedom to then go out more often, uh, but also do a lot more work in the online business. So that's what got me. And then one morning I woke up and I had symptoms of a heart attack for the next six weeks. I had tight chest. I couldn't breathe. I had elevated heart rate. I had tingling from the top of my head to the end of my fingertips. And I mean 24 hours a day, seven days a week for six weeks straight. And so I did all of those things. Uh, things to overcome it unknowingly. So better planning and preparation. I eliminated caffeine. I stopped going out as much. I better planned and prepared my days. I got more sleep. It was just, a, you know, I was, I was living a little bit of a hypocritical lifestyle because I was, you know, very, very healthy for five days of the week. And then two nights of the week, I was, you know, I was out and doing things. So I knew what I had to do for those other two days and I got dialed in. Then for professional accountability, I was hiring yoga instructors, Qigong instructors, which is standing meditation, regular meditation instructors, um, and uh, what else was I doing? Um, tai Chi. I mean, I was trying it all. Uh, to, I was turning over every rock in order to overcome this anxiety. So I was hiring these people. I had to show up. They were giving me accountability. They were giving me expert advice. And uh, funny enough, Jason, they helped me learn how to breathe properly. Now, there I was, 30 years old. I thought I was like a professional breather, having done it for three <laughs> decades, right? Uh, but I didn't know how to breathe, and most people don't. They breathe from their upper chest. And when you breathe short, shallow breaths from, the up of your, up, from your upper chest, it increases adrenaline. Increasing adrenaline increases anxiety and makes things worse. So that's what I was doing. So you need to breathe in nice and slow through your nose, fill up your belly, and then breathe out slowly through your mouth. And if you do that three times, four seconds in, six seconds out, that will really reduce like situational anxiety. And so that helped me. And then uh, positive social support. I had some friends who had gone through some similar stuff. So I was able to lean on them, call them on bad days and that sort of thing. And then the next thing was a meaningful incentive. And quite frankly, this one is just plain and simple. I just wanted to get rid of it. I would do anything to get rid of it. And so that's what I did. I, you know, I found every possible way to overcome the anxiety and the meaningful incentive was just to get rid of it uh, because it's impossible to explain to somebody. You know, you're, you're sitting there, you look normal, but inside you are freaking out. And that's just the best way to describe it uh, personally for me. It's not like having a broken arm where you can say, hey, Jason, look, my arm's broken. It's in a cast. You probably know what it's like to even bang your arm. But no one knows who doesn't have anxiety what's going on inside you. So it's very difficult, and I wanted to get rid of it. And then finally, the big deadline. This was actually related to business. So I hired a business coach. We had a big product launch coming up um, about three months months after the anxiety started. So I knew that I was going to be very stressed out during that time. And I didn't want to have that anxiety uh, bothering me during the launch. And so 
I was just, again, turning over every rock to overcome that anxiety so that I could feel better. And all of those things combined led to me overcoming the anxiety after one of the, the second trip to the emergency room. They gave me some tests. They said, we'll call you if anything's wrong. I didn't hear from them. I was reading a book that said, you know, there's nothing physically wrong with you. And I guess maybe I'm a little bit of a hyper, hypochondriac and so, or hypochondriac or whatever it is. And so I was able to go, okay, I'm, too, I'm actually too busy for this anxiety stuff. So that, like when I said that to myself, that was, helped me overcome it. And I finally was able to break free. I still I had some flashbacks of it, but um, through the breathing, I was able to overcome it. And today I don't deal with it at all. That's awesome. It's a great success story. So it was a heck of a ride. I'll tell you how much. <laughs> I bet it was. You know, earlier you were talking about concentrating on what counts. So, you know, just to kind of clarify for folks, how do you feel like somebody even knows what counts, you know, is it, you know, obviously we need to create a vision for our life, uh, based on what counts, but where does somebody even start? Uh, that is a great question. And I've struggled with this for so long because I don't know about you, but I'm a guy who knows what matters in my life. I've always kind of known what mattered. I knew what I wanted to do when I was 16 years old. I wanted to be a strength and conditioning coach in the NHL. I had a, like a career plan before most people even think of a career plan. So I've always kind of known what matters. And I didn't know how to articulate it properly until my friend, uh, Luciano Del Monte, who's a pastor up here in Canada, and uh, uh, the father of my friend, Vince Del Monte, he said to me, Craig, everyone's going through four phases of life, or four seasons of life, he called it. You're either in the season of health, of wealth, of family, or of personal enrichment. And what that means is you might be in a phase where the most important thing in your life right now is making money and saving money. So maybe you're young, you're engaged, and you need to save money for a house and to, you know, for your first child. So you're in a season of wealth building. Or maybe you're in a season of health because you're 55 years old, kids are out of the house, you have a good relationship with your spouse, business is going decent enough so that you financially you're not too worried. And so thing is, you've gained 30 pounds, you're pre-diabetic, so health is your priority. That's what matters. That's what you focus on first thing in the morning. Third, you might be in a season of family. So maybe, in, you know, back to our first example, maybe it's a couple years later, you've got two kids that are really, really young. You've got a good relationship with your spouse, but those two kids should be your number one priority in life because when they're so young, first of all, you want to spend a lot of time with them, but second of all, they need you the most. And so you're in a season of family. You're not going to neglect your health totally. You're not going to neglect your financial stuff. Um, you're not going to neglect spiritual stuff or whatever it is that drives you, but Number one thing that you focus on first thing in the morning is how can I do something for my family that's the right thing, whether it's, uh, you know, getting up and making sure that they're okay, getting them breakfast, getting them off to preschool or whatever it is. They are your number one focus. And then finally, personal enrichment. This is um, where my mother is in life right now. Now, she's 75, no kids in the house, obviously. Uh, financially, she's set um, and, you know, she's not working and her health is decent. So what she's doing is spending her time in volunteer work and what we label personal enrichment, which is where you're going out and adding value to the world. Um, and so she works, wakes up first thing in the morning and she goes and she checks her volunteer schedule and she organizes her other volunteers. And that's what she does first thing in the morning. So that's how you figure out what your priority is. You look at what season of life you're in and then you figure out, okay, this is the season I'm in. These are the activities that mean the most. These are the things that are going to move my life ahead. This is what I have to focus on, and away we go. Makes total sense. And that's actually, again, it's a great system on exactly how to figure out where you're at. So talk, let's talk vision for a quick sec. You know, how have you used your vision? Because, you, you know, you already said you, you were very direct. You knew what you wanted to do, which I think is more of a rarity, uh, unfortunately. Um, how have you used your vision to achieve exactly what you've wanted to so far in life? Yeah, it's a great question. Quite frankly, this is my absolute favorite part of my system. I mean, I just love helping people identify what matters. And then I actually write visions for some people that have actually made people cry because it's so powerful. Um, so it's a bit of my writing skills and a bit of my love for the vision exercise that allows me to see their future. And that's all we're doing here is we're helping people see their future in 
in their situations. And so what we do is we put together what I say is a movie script for your life as if we were writing this three to five years in the future and you've already accomplished the biggest goals in your life. And so we sit down and we think, okay, well, where do you want to live? Um, what do you want to achieve? What does your family look like? What does your daily routine look like? What organizations is your family involved in? And so in my book, I have a very, very detailed, clear, concise, and personal vision statement. No, you know, people know a lot about me when they're done reading that section. And I just want everyone to go through it, um, answer the questions that are in the book, will help them identify how to write their own vision statement. And when you have a vision, a powerful destination for your future, then you know exactly what to do to get there. And it helps you say no to the detours that would get you off track. And it helps you avoid the obstacles in life. And it helps you become more successful. So that's the power of the vision. That's why I love it. That's why I want to help people do it. And that's why I know it can really change your life when they have it. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I I love to ask this question because especially of of anybody who's successful, um, everyone's had something like this. So uh, of any of the less than positives. What would you say has been your number one mistake uh, career-wise? Oh, it's so easy. And and I get asked this question once in a while, and it's always, I didn't get a coach or a mentor soon enough. And so people that are listening, you're very wise to be listening to this podcast, very wise to be getting coaching from Jason, because coaching helps you get more success faster. It's the number two pillar in our five pillars. And I got coaching in 2006, but if I would have hired a coach in 2003 when I had more than enough money to do it, I would be so far ahead in life. My book would have came out years ago. I would have been helping you know, 10 times more people now. I'd be 10 times the person that I am right now, always improving. And so I wish I wasn't as cheap and stubborn and as much of a know-it-all back in the day. If I would have gotten the coach sooner, I'd be more successful. Wow. It's, it's, it's such a... Uh... I almost feel like it's, I feel like everybody says that. And yet, um, the minute I took advantage of that and, and got myself some accountability and got myself the opportunity to stand on somebody else's shoulders, um, and jump over those potholes, it's, uh, it's really life changing. So I, uh, I remember being sitting there being presented with opportunities going, ah, gosh, that seems like a lot. Or, and then you realize, you know, in retrospect, man, that would have saved me so much or would have. Oh yeah. So I know. I know. It's, it uh, back to that, that rule I said about what not to do. It's not, sometimes it's not what they actually help you do. It's what they save you from yourself from doing. I mean, they might save you from making a hundred thousand dollar mistake. And so if you're investing, you know, a couple thousand dollars in coaching, that's a huge return on not wasting money because I know that my coaches could have helped me save, gosh, I don't know, maybe 150 grand in the mistakes that I made in my business if I only would have had coaching sooner. Yep. (laughs) All right. It is time for our resource of the week. So tell me this, um, what is the best place because you are a treasure trove of information and valuable information. So what's the best place that uh, my listeners can go to Number one, grab a hold of your book and your system um, and find out more about how you go about helping people to become more successful. So I'd love them to go to, uh, you know, just pick up the book on Amazon or get the uh, book on steroids, which is actually this perfect day formula kit that we put together. It's like having me sitting down at your kitchen table and coaching you through creating your vision, your rules, your five pillars. And you can watch a little video I made for that at Perfect Day formula.com. Now there's also a couple other sites I want to share that have a whole bunch of free tools on it. So early to rise.com. That's where I write all my daily wisdom. And so all the stuff that we talked about, I have other stories about how to use the five pillars and all that great stuff. And then I have a couple of free tools for people like a time journal and, you know, how to sleep better information at Craig forward slash free gift. And these, uh, this my ten three two one zero sleep formula, Jason, has been shared in Russia, Australia, England, all over the place in on television, in newspapers. It's really gone viral, and we've had hundreds of thousands of people go to our website and use the information. Um, and it just helps people get to sleep better and sleep deeper without any tools, without any supplements or anything. It just allows them to wake up refreshed and have perfect days. I love this. Folks, if you've not already done that, 
Um, get over to those three sites right now. If you've not already grabbed his book, what are you waiting for? Um, the kit is a no brainer as well. I mean, imagine having Craig sitting at your kitchen table, helping you walk through this. These are, these are multi-million dollar exercises. Okay. Take advantage of this now. All right. So Craig, I, I always like to end my podcast with, uh, one really important question. So if you could give owners just one solid piece of advice or one action step to take right now to either help their business or more importantly to help them live a better life what would that piece of advice be it's that 15 minutes in the morning 15 minutes if you can do that get up 15 minutes before anybody else in your house it's a little bit of a sacrifice i understand Get up, go down to your kitchen table, pen and paper, no electronics. You sit there. Put this in your mind. Visualize it right now. You're sitting there and you're looking at that blank piece of paper. And at the top, it says number one opportunity to take advantage of. And you know that maybe there's a, you know, there's a new bunch of people that would be interested in your programs at your facility, or maybe there's a new store coming in that's going to be a great joint venture partner, and you say, how can I work with these people? And you sit there and you think for 15 minutes, and you put together this amazing mind map of all these ways to increase the profits in your business, in your career, and you're like, oh my goodness, in 15 minutes, look at the amazing thinking I just did on this. Or maybe you have a problem. Maybe you have $5,000 worth of credit card debt, and you're like, okay, number one problem, get out of credit card debt in 30 days. Okay, now here are all the ways I can cut expenses, and you list 10 things, and here are the ways to increase income, and you list 20 things, and here's you know the number one credit card we transfer our debt to so that we cut interest from 18% to 15%. And the next thing you know, you're like, oh my goodness, this plan is so simple. I'm going to get out of credit card debt in 21 days because of this plan, because otherwise if you just tried to like figure this out over the course of a busy day, you never would have the success. So it is that 15 minutes of clear thinking that is going to set you free and make you successful. I love that. I'm going to add an additional 15 minutes tomorrow morning. There you so, go, uh, my friend. You, you've got you've got another convert. All right, awesome. Craig. Thank you so much for uh, for joining me today. I know how busy your schedule is, and it means the world to me that you share some of your time and a lot of your wisdom with us. Hey, happy to help. I really enjoyed this conversation, Jerry. Jason. Me, me as well. Folks, that is all the time we've got today. Thanks so much for tuning in to The Real Deal with Jason Silverman. For more info about private coaching or to see if you'd benefit from my mastermind group, visit me over at www.jasonmsilverman.com. I look forward to helping you achieve the success that you truly deserve. Until next time, let me leave you with this. Get out there and be the real deal. Set a goal. Make a plan. Work like hell towards it and achieve the success that's waiting for you. Now's the time. Get out there and make it happen. Go get them. This has been Jason Silverman, and I hope you have a spectacular week. You've been listening to The Real Deal with Jason Silverman. To access the great resources mentioned in the show and for information on coaching and mastermind group opportunities with Jason, please visit JasonMSilverman.com.